Hello, everyone, and thank you, Chair, for the introduction. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here. My talk today is about direct lithium extraction technologies for zero carbon lithium recovery with the focus on emerging membrane based DLE technologies. As you can see here, the Tesla share price has been increased substantially as the global demand demand for EV electric cars uh, soared a lot. So, and this is not only Tesla, other uh, mega car manufacturers also moved towards EVs. So this has created a huge demand for lithium, which resulted in a sharp increase in its price. At the moment, there are two main limitations for lithium supply and the vast majority of world's lithium is found in lower grade resources and is not economical and viable to extract. Uh, this point, which is called mineralogical barrier, represents grades of lithium which could be economically extracted. Um, I should say that DLE technologies will have the potential to shift the, this mineralogical barrier to left and provides an opportunity to extract lithium from lower grade resources. The second limitation is that current mining technologies are very carbon intensive. As you can see here, the extraction of lithium hydroxide from brine can produce at least uh, five tons of CO2 per one ton of lithium hydroxide. And that value increases to around 15 tons of CO2 per one ton of lithium hydroxide. We need a technology to change this, and DLE can do that. So this, this is a typical fellow sheet of produ producing lithium carbonate from brine, and DLE can be replaced by many separation and purification stages in the production line. So what is DLE? Basically, DLE technology refers to any physical or chemical process that can selectively target and separate lithium ions from impurities. Technically, we have two types of DLE, DLE rich feed and DLE lean feed. In the DLE rich feed, impurities are removed from the uh, feed, whereas in the DLE lean feed, this is the lithium ions that are removed from the feed. DLA technologies that are based on adsorption, ion exchange, or solvent extraction are advancing towards above TRL5, while membrane technology has not been commercially implemented. And it is not because membranes are not competent. It is just because it is, the membranes are not mature enough. A few decades ago, uh, I would say membrane were not the mainstream uh, for desalination. While these days, reverse osmosis and nanofiltration are being used for desalination everywhere. Um, there are a few bottlenecks for developing of lithium selective membranes. Uh, for example, the need for high selective lithium membrane trade-off between lithium selectivity and permeability, membrane chemical, thermal, mechanical, and long-term stability, scalability, and also, of course, cost. Based on our study and raw skill report, the lithium selective membranes can be used in different places within the lithium ion battery supply chain with a total market of above $21 billion. So having the introduction on DLE, let's get down to business of making lithium ion selective membranes. To make a membrane ion selective, these parameters need to be adjusted and tuned carefully. From now on, I'm going to talk about how these parameters need needs to be um, tuned to achieve ion selectivity. The first parameter is nanochannel size. As you can see here, 
When the nanochannel size is 0 0.6 nanometer, the membrane showed lithium selectivity, while when the size increased to 1 nanometer, the membrane lost its lithium ion selectivity. And the possible reason is related to the ionic hydration diameter of ions. When the size is larger than ionic hydration diameter of lithium, which is 0 0.76 nanometer, Ion can go through the nanochannel fully hydrated and there is no selectivity. Whereas when we reduce the size of the nanochannel below 0 0.76 nanometer, the ions begin to experience partial dehydration, which gives the membrane ionic selectivity. It is reported that lithium ions in nanoconfined areas showing the highest lithium ion mobility as they have the most compact hydration shell. This will provide an opportunity for lithium ions to move faster inside the nanochannel. This is the first generation of lithium ion selective vermiculite membrane that we started to work on in 2017 and we published its uh, results in 2019 in water research. What we discovered was that when we reduced the nanochannel size from above 1 nanometer to 0 0.4 nanometer, the ion transported in a zigzag fashion using the top and bottom wall surfaces. And we found that this is due to a spontaneous symmetry of breakage of charge. Uh, we also found that water molecules begin to form an ice-like structure as the size reduces. We think that the zigzag transport mode and ice-like structure of water are the main mechanisms for lithium ion selectivity in this particular case. So we did similar study, but with different building blocks. Here we use Maxim. The Maxim membrane showed good lithium to magnesium selectivity. On the contrary to what we were expecting, the ions did not use the wall surface to transport. Instead, they used the water molecules to jump and hoop out of the membrane. We did some investigation to understand why, and we found that apart from the nanochannel size and ion hydration shells, the material chemistry and different energy barriers inside the nanochannel play a more crucial role. The second parameter is nanochannel length, which contributes to ion selectivity. When we set the nanochannel size to 0 0.4 nanometer, the ion reached their max lithium ion reached their maximum velocity in two nanometer from the nanochannel entrance. Whereas when we set the size to 0 0.8 nanometer, the lithium ion reached their maximum velocity three nanometer from the entrance. This means that there is an interplay effect between the nanochannel size and the length which needs to be carefully optimized. The third factor is morphology. Nature and evolution have created the most sophisticated ion filters with extremely high selectivity and ionic permeability. There are basically two important lessons from nature. Number one, ions experience multiple dehydration hydration processes as they move into the filter. Number two, there is an asymmetrical element inside their design. The asymmetry is either in morphology, chemistry, or bedability. Shifting from symmetrical to asymmetrical morphology provides us an opportunity to move towards anhydrous transportation of lithium, mimicking biological uh, ion channels. We did some theoretical study to see if uh, creating the asymmetrical morphology gives us lithium ion selectivity. Guess what we found? We observed an incredible lithium ion selectivity. A non-lithium selective nanochannel turned into lithium exclusive by the design. 
based on the theoretical finding, we have spent almost two years to make the first experimental prototype membrane with asymmetrical morphology in atom scale. As you can see here, the membrane showed a very prom promising lithium selectivity. Unfortunately, I cannot talk in details as we just submitted our revision. I hope it will be online soon. The fourth factor is surface chemistry and functional groups. Functional groups can alter the lithium ion selectivity through altering interlayer spacing, creating affinity differences, interfering with the surface charge governed transportation of the ions, adjusting the electric double layer thickness, and for some materials such as graphene oxide, the functional group could result in a dynamic DS spacing. As you can see here, the size of the nanochannel changes to 0.9.3 angstrom when we expose the membrane to sodium, whereas it reduced to 8.5 angstrom as it exposed to calcium. Also, the orbital atoms of the functional groups can alter the actual spaces that ion can transport. Technically, the empty space between the stacked GO nanosheets decreases due to a higher coverage of oxygen, oxygen functional groups. Creating affinity differences is another way of making ion selective membranes. As you can see here, lithium ions showed the lowest affinity to the sulfonate groups, meaning that it can hold other ions more than lithium, giving the membrane ions ionic selectivity. Here, a polysulfonate Polystyrene sulfonate molecule with abandoned sulfonate groups were added to the moftin film membrane, which, as you can see here, results in a high lithium ion selectivity. Functional density should be carefully adjusted, as having a high number of functional groups increases the activation energy required for lithium ions to move from one side to the next one. But comparison, a low number of functional groups does not meet the requirements of surface charge cover transportation of ions. As you can see here, we found that uh, uh, our membrane is only ion conductive if the hydroxyl functional group density is set to between 10 and 50 percent. It also seems that the variation of functional group density and type is not also effective when it comes to the lithium ions extraction from a solution containing monovalent cations such as potassium or sodium. And it, and it is more effective when, when it comes to the separation of lithium from multivalent cations. The degree of functional group density can change the electrical double layer thickness as well. A low surface charge compresses the electric double layer, therefore, there is no cation to anion selectivity. On the other hand, the high surface charge expands the EDL electric double layer and results in a high cation to anion selectivity. Gas molecules can also alter lithium ion selectivity via altering interlayer spacing, creating ion trapping conditions and altering passable cavities. As you can see here, the addition of gas molecule into nanochannels can increase the DA spacing, which could affect the ionic selectivity. A specific functional groups on the gas molecule can have different affinity towards ions. These can create trapping condition for target ions to create ion selectivity. Gas molecule can also alter the accessible space, which is known as passable cavities. Moving from a linear transport to a zigzag mode can improve ion selectivity. It can also introduce energy barriers against the transportation of the target ions. Using the principles that I just discussed, we use tannic acid as a gas molecules to make graphene oxide membranes lithium ion selective. This is the side view of tannic acid graphene oxide membranes filled with water molecules. The geo nanochannels are decorated with tannic acid, which creates limited 
impassable cavities and energy barriers for lithium ions to transport. Also, the tannic acid molecules has a specific features similar to the lithium ion ionophores and cron ether. As you can see here, the, ta the, the trapping energy of lithium is lower than that of magnesium and calcium, but higher than that of sodium and potassium. In another interesting work, we use tannic acid as an intermediate layer to promote the nucleation and growth of lithium selective MOF membranes. This is a unique work as we developed a way to create MOF thin film membrane on a flexible polymer polymeric substrate, which makes our technology scalable. We use similar principles to develop a lithium ion sensor using lithium selective membranes. The sensor showed a very good performance. Up to here, all of the membranes that we developed were the first or second generation. Here is our recent third generation membrane, which showed an astonishing lithium ion selectivity. We managed to find a way to fuse two different nanochannels to make an asymmetric pore with altered energy walls. This, select, this is the selectivity of the membranes before molecular fusion, and that is the selectivity after the nanochannel fusions. In the next step, we added an specific ion trapper right next to the mouth of the pore, which boosted our lithium ion selectivity. And I hope this work will be online soon. Let's go quickly through the environmental conditions. The first one is ionic strength of the feed. As you can see here, increasing the lithium concentration in the feed can open up the electric double layer, resulting in the loss of selectivity. pH plays a very important role in ion selectivity. Increasing the pH could deprotonate the membrane surface, increases and increase the charge density, and thus causing electric double layer overlapping with higher ionic selectivity. Driving force is another important factor. Generally speaking, pressure difference is good for water separation, while potential difference is more efficient for ion separation. Increasing the pressure load can cause microstructural changes and reduction in interlayer spacing, leading to a higher lithium ion selectivity. Increasing the pressure difference across the membrane can make a non-conductive membrane conductive. As you can see here, one megapascal is not enough to overcome the energy entrance barrier and dehydration energy for ions to enter the nanochannels with size smaller than seven angstrom. However, when the pressure rose to 10 megapascal, the membrane became ion conductive. Of course, the compromise would be energy consumption rate. Interestingly, when we switch the driving force from pressure to potential difference, the same membrane showed ion conductivity, ion conductivity for nanochannel size smaller than seven angstrom, even at low potential density. We also found that for geo membrane, increasing the electric driving force could not significant, significantly enhance lithium ion selectivity. However, when we changed the materials, the membrane showed higher lithium selectivity after increasing the applied potential. That means the material matters a lot. In a nutshell, in order to make a lithium selective membrane, the first thing is selecting a right material and then tuning the morphology and surface chemistry of the nanochannels. Finally, driving force and environmental conditions need to be adjusted carefully to get a stable lithium selective membrane. I would like to acknowledge all of our uh, mentors, collaborators, postdocs, PhD students, and, and ARC uh, for funding this research, Universal Technology Sydney, and other organizations and institutes who are helping us to drive this topical area of research forward. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>